good afternoon welcome to lecture 4 on this uh, c programming basically uh, yesterday we stopped at whatever concept we have learned and today onwards we will start with the actual programming so the first program we need to write is program to display a hello world i know many of you have already written it so it will be very easy program for us uh, you just have to include hash include stdio.h then use int main print a hello world and return zero but there are some people who are very new to this class and this is their first lecture for them i am telling you this is the first program we need to write which is displaying of hello world now those who are very new comers do not waste their time in installing the software they can directly type in google something called as c programming online and just press enter they will get this online gdb compiler which they can use or they can use any other compiler would do i will also share this link with you so that you can get started now point or topic we have covered till this lecture are nothing but just a variable its types and some of the arithmetic instructions like addition subtraction multiplication and division so today we are going to learn all the programs and then we will start with the first tutorial that uh, we have to complete in c programming so we will see that particular tutorial also so let me start my code blocks uh, now it will be very easy code for you so you all can do this there is no need to wait for me to complete so when you start your code block it will run multiple instructions at the background and make sure you turn off your antivirus because this code blocks when execute actually generates exe file and then it runs that exe file so your antivirus might think that this is a virus being playing and that's why uh, it could block the particular software so it's always better to turn off the uh, uh, turn off the antivirus during the c programming course now here you have to select this file and then uh, click on new and then select file and then you have to click on c c++ source click okay click next select c click next here to say uh, the path name so just click on this we are in test c3 7th program so i will write that test c3 7th code and then i will save it once i give the name i have to click finish then i will land up on this particular page uh, then you have to press control and scroll the mouse to zoom in and start typing the code so uh, hello world code is nothing but just uh, starter so stdio.h now we typically include three, three libraries so include on io dot h and then third one is a standard lib so include and after that uh, we sometimes now we have learned about math library so we are including that also so standard lib dot h that is the third library uh, then now since we have learned about mathematical instruction we will include that also include then again i will type so here it should automatically suggest you the names otherwise your installation is not proper and uh, it will not run the code so directly go for online compiler then each c program must have a main main loop so you type that then uh, open close curly bracket and return zero semicolon so once you type this much then you are ready to start programming now first task uh, is uh, print your name so you can just type print f and then in bracket uh, type hello world 
type my name and then i will just put a semicolon and this is the uh, program number one that everybody writes and you should see hello nina that's my output screen and let's see what is the next program so hello world program how it works the hash include is a pre processing command that tells the compiler that contents of stdio that is standard input and output file should be taken into the program then stdio function contains scanf and printf that takes input and displays the output respectively if you use printf function without writing hash include stdio dot h the program should not compile the execution of c program starts with the main function the printf library function is sent to send a formatted output to the screen in this program we are displaying hello world into the screen and return z statement exit status of the program a simple term uh, that ends with this statement uh, lets my program know that this is the end of the program now uh, next is uh, write a program to print an integer now how we will print an integer first is include stdio.h that we have already done we will take a int integer maybe a number type so this is where we declare that number then we will ask user to enter an integer then we will use scanf and then we will find that number then printf and you have entered this particular number so this is how the output should look like uh, enter integer 25 and you have entered 25 so let's do that program now so I, instead of hello nina i will say enter an integer maybe you can do spelling mistakes inside this double quotes whatever spelling mistake but not outside because outside everything is programming which has a spelling or case sensitivity also so even if, by mistake some people write capital p that is also not correct a program should give you an error so it has to be perfect every time you type always give a tab whenever you start a new loop so inside main it is uh, four spaces so tab is nothing but total four spaces and then uh, once we start learning about if loop and further loops then we will add these tabs and we will go every time we enter a loop four tabs ahead uh, sorry four spaces ahead that is one tab and whenever we close the loop we will come back this make sure that we are always aware that how many loops we have opened and how many loops that we have closed so inside scanf uh, i will just write a command now i know i am entering uh, integer so percent d is the command and then don't forget to write ampersand and then the variable name so variable name let's call int a that will be my variable name and then i will just say uh, ampersand a yeah, don't forget to give semicolon you can see whether giving this space or not does it make any difference or not and you can let me know and then i want to finally display the output so i can just again write printf then uh, whatever user has entered you can type you have entered let's say a uh, particular uh, value which is again we don't know so percent d is like fill in the blank whatever user enters display that value now this time you directly write a and don't write ampersand a otherwise you will get an error and don't forget to give semicolon after each command otherwise you will get an error and uh, if you are getting those error that's good but you should know why you got that error otherwise there is no learning happening so if you run this i should get a prompt enter an integer i will say 6 and it will show that you have entered 6 uh, now in this case the integer let's say if integer is more than one digit let's say i want to say 67 will it display me 6 or 67 the correct answer is it will display me 67 let's try and create some error let's try and give him i want 67.8 this is not an integer and in that case it truncates the decimal points and afterwards even it doesn't round off remember round off means 67.8 should have been 68 but it is not rounding off also it is absolute truncation so it just does ignore whatever is there after your decimal point and cut uh, take the floor value 
so floor value is irrespective of whatever you do the minimum lowest integer that is complete that is taken as uh, the value of a so next program let's understand in this program a variable name numbered and in our case it was a is declared then uh, the user is asked for integer number to be entered this number is stored into the number variable using this canf command and then ampersand number so here the space is given so that means the space doesn't matter over there finally the value stored in number is displayed on the screen again using percentage and a space holder next program is write a program to to add two integers so this time we need number 1 number 2 and then sum to give the answers here you will say enter two integers then use double percent and then write number 1 and number 2 so till this point we were doing it separately like enter first number enter second number now today this is a fourth lecture so we will go one step advance and we will do this program where we have uh, taken two number using two percent is inside a single scanf statement finally we add number 1 plus number 2 and uh, store the value at sum at sum is also integer it doesn't matter as you are adding two integers the result is going to be always an integer and then you can directly display percent d plus percent d equal to percent d that is number 1 plus number 2 equal to sum and return zero so let's do this code so i have already taken a i will say i will need b and then i will see uh, another value c uh, instead of single percent d i will need 2 percent d and then instead of single ampersand here you have to be sure that you are also given comma between next ampersand don't forget that so you have to give one more comma and then write, write ampersand b so now you will take first value which will stored in a next value which will be stored in b and then you can display all the values like percent d plus percent d so whenever you write percent d remember you are actually writing fill in the blank okay is equal to again you write percent d and here you tell him what to uh, print a plus b equal to c now i forgot to do the actual operation that is c equal to a plus b and now this code is complete so let's try whether it works perfectly so my first number is let's say 15 press enter next number is 30 and the answer should be 45 so 15 plus 30 equal to 45 so now uh, we have already done this kind of program in yesterday lecture where we not only added the two numbers we have subtracted multiplied divide and also we have done a operation called modulus now when we do this uh, the two integers here they have taken 11 and 12 then uh, they have added to two numbers uh, which were uh, inserted by the users and they were stored in the variable num name in number 1 and number 2 respectively then these two numbers are added using plus operator and the result is stored in sum variable so sum equal to number 1 plus number 2 and finally the actual sum was computed that is 23 and that was printed using another printf command next program is multiply two numbers we already did this but we haven't studied about this percentage 2 lf so let us understand what is this percentage 0.2 lf and here this 0.2 means it will only have accuracy up to two decimal places so if you try to multiply 2.4 with 1.28 you will get a big number 2.69 something 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 so you don't need this much of uh, output you just need two digit accuracy so instead of uh, percentage f or percentage lf you always write percentage 0.2 lf so this ensures that only uh, decimal accuracy up to two digits is displayed at the output so i will show you Case, uh, let's do this multiplication here instead of your regular uh, uh, int value. The only thing is we are declaring double. So yeah, this time also I change this to int. It doesn't matter. You can write void also. And here instead of int, you have to write double. Now it doesn't matter whether you put a void or int at the ba base of the main function. 
because this is this will tell me the data type being returned by this main function which is anyways going to be zero so whether you in, return integer or a float or a character it doesn't matter if you write void but if you write int over there then you have to return any integer value something like zero only so that's why i preferred writing void so that anything happens with my main loop it will still run properly now here double abc are the three integers enter and may not be integers maybe this time i will ask them to enter numbers and then i will ask enter uh, and numbers ki jagah two kar dete hai usko enter two numbers percent percent uh, a b and now i will do multiplication of a and b so uh, answer what we will get is a into b now here don't make a mistake of using percent d you have to use percent f or percent lf because we know the our final results are in the format of floats or double so percent lf for double you can use that directly but if you want you can use percentage f for double because double is a type of float but with a double memory value so if you do this and run the code now whenever you see this particular option to be gray just go to this particular black location and click on space bar or something so that this becomes again enabled and this time you have to select this option with a mechanical wheel and a green triangle and click on it so enter two numbers i will say 3 and then 5 so here you will see 3 into 5 is 15 dot something 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 now let's see what is the effect of writing 0.2 or the 0.3 let's say instead of 0.2 will it truncate after three decimal places so i will again rerun the same code here you can see you can also write uh, 0.2 over here or even 0.1 over here and we will see what is the difference so let's run this code um, again while running uh, don't forget to rebuild and run otherwise build and you will run the same code so instead of a uh, small number i will say 2. Uh, let's say 2.34 is the first number second number is 1.7 and then my answer is 3.987 here you will see that instead of those lengthy zeros every times were occurring now we have limited the results to the proper decimal placing now also you can change this number from 0.3 to 0.2 Uh, and everything to point two, and again I will rerun the code. The values I will keep same. I don't know. I have kept two point three five, and then one point seven, and now it looks much more neat. That is two point three five into one point seven equal to four. So you can see as soon as I started approximating the same number, the answer will also get approximated with respect to the truncation of this decimal places. so remember uh, this truncation you can avoid to get a more accurate results but in exam sometimes they may mention that uh, we need the value uh, accurate up to two decimal places so at that time we have to do this particular job to get a number accurate up to two decimal places let's go back to our programming here two numbers are entered now in this program a user is asked to enter two numbers which are stored in variable a and b respectively with the format long f that is long float we also call it as a double in our c programming then the product of a and b is evaluated and then the result is stored into the product next is finally product is displayed on the user screen using a command print f uh notice that uh, the result is rounded off to the second decimal places using 0.2 lf conversion character so you, all these things are called conversion character that is percent whenever you see percent followed by dot and some number n this is what we call a conversion characters in c programming a character variable holds an ascii value between 0 to 127 rather than the actual value of character itself the integer value of ascii code starts for example capital a is always at 65 what does this mean that instead of storing a it will store 65 into the variable and whenever we print it as a character it prints as a uh, character itself 
now let us see an example over here so program to print a ascii value first thing is include uh, include stdioh and car c blah 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 now here we have seen the ascii value of percent c equal to percent d and then just give the same variable you are trying to put c as percent c and then c as percent d you will see both the values so let's do that program we have already done that but let's just repeat so instead of double now i will use char and i will need only one character so enter a character rather than enter numbers and then instead of doing percent ls we will do percent c and then ampersand c uh, here you don't need any further operation uh, you will just say the ascii value instead of doing all this fancy you can write ascii value someone say ascii someone say ascii there is a full form to this particular ascii we will see that later and then you have to say percent c equal to percent d and in both the commas or both the filling blanks you have to pass c and c itself so once you do that uh, let's run this code again it is gray so i must have forgotten to close the last times program so i will do that and then it becomes green and yellow just click on that it will ask me to put a character let's say capital a and press enter now it is showing that ascii value of a is 65 so it is standard and you can try your own name which you have already done uh, let's go ahead so let's see what this particular program does is it asks for a user to enter a character stored in variable c then when percent d format is applied it actually gives us the ascii value of g instead of displaying the g and when we use percent c format then the g is displayed instead of ascii value 71 next is program to compute a quotient and a remainder so here uh, this program takes dividend divisor quotient and a remainder all as a integer format then enter dividend you do percent d and then uh, since it all are all are decimal places you can use percent d and say and dividend then enter divisor uh, percent d and divisor so printf scanf always remember whenever you need a user input always use printf then scanf then printf then scanf then quotient equal to dividend upon divisor so actually you do division but it will only return the quotient component because it's a integer format it cannot store the decimal point you have already seen what happens to 67.8 it doesn't round off also it just kills or it just floors down the value now to explain you the ceiling and flooring operation most of you might be knowing already from your physics but i will just explain you so uh, if you have a value something like 23.7 the ideal rounding off since it is above 0.5 the round off operation should have made it 24 now ceiling operation uh, is always taking this value to the upper value so if even if it is 23.7 it will be 24 but if it would have been 23.1 seal operation would have taken it to 24 on the other hand whenever you do a floor operation it will just truncate the value so 23.7 or 23.1 doesn't matter it will always say as 23 so similarly when you divide like 15 by 2 the answer would have been 7.5 but if you store it as a integer c program actually truncates the value and gives out the flooring value that is 7 so you can try out yourself if you divide 7 by 2 uh, sorry 15 by 2 you get answer at 7 which is not correct at all so you can say this is a quotient and now how to get the remainder yesterday we have seen another uh, trick to get a remainder where we studied about the modulo operator so modulo operator is like percentage sign and that is very weird because we uh, always see percentage as how you calculate with respect to the 100 value so when you say 15 by 2 this number actually gives one in c program that is where a modulo operator comes into the picture so this is nothing but a remainder
now if you go back to both the answer the first answer is 7 then the dividing factor was 2 and then the modulo operator was 1 so this is what we called a remainder and this is what we called a quotient so q r and then this is what uh, a divisor was so 15 is equal to this 7 uh, that is dividend uh, is uh, 7 into 2 plus 1 so let's go back to the main code so this is what they have done a program to write a quotient and a remainder uh, it was very easy program so let's go ahead in this program uh, we have used two integers as division and divisor and they are stored into the variable dividend and divisor respectively uh, then the value of quotient is evaluated using a division operator stored into the quotient so quotient equal to dividend by divisor similarly a remainder is evaluated using percentage sign the modulo operator and stored into the remainder so remainder equal to dividend by divisor and finally the result is displayed next is use of size of variable to compute the size of different variable and print the result so return size of using percentage lu and percentage zu that is format specifier now here we have used int that is int will require 4 bytes then float float type will again require 4 bytes then double double will require 8 types and then char char will require 1 byte here you will see that instead of uh, size uh, we have type int type so int type is different than your regular uh, variable so int type is the name of the variable and int is its format so whenever you say size of you cannot write int or float or double inside but whatever is the variable name that you have to write inside a size of function and that will always replaced by zu character okay now this zu will evaluate the percentage so percent d will give you a number percent zu will give you a unidirectional or the unsigned number that is always the positive numbers anyways we know that all the characters that is char will require one int will require either two or four depending upon whether it is a short int or a long int even float will require four or eight depends on short or long and double will require 8 16 or 32 depend upon its size next is this program uh, has four variables that is int type float type double uh, type and char type which are declared at the beginning of the program and then we have used a size of variable to calculate their sizes next is uh, write a program using a long keyword so this time instead of uh, simple keywords we will use size of over these variables int a long b long long c double e and long double f so if you see how the variable set change its sizes so by default int takes 4 bytes but long int takes 8 byte which is same as your long long c so long long and long will take 8 byte longer integers now next is double which is also 8 byte so if you see all these three are same in size but what is the problem is this double can store a floating point number even though it is require 8 byte memory it cannot store a floating byte number because it is a long int so remember long int is never same as double since they both require 8 bytes that is okay but long int will always store a integer number so what does this long int is used for by default your int values are limited by a certain number which is 32000 something something 654 or something that uh, that number is there uh, so basically 2 raised to 16 is the total 65000 something 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 and divided by 2 is that number that is 2 raised to 15 now this is the maximum number it can hold and if you Uh, use a long int, then you can go above this number. So uh, basically, uh, this is the length of the number, which is already very big. Now this means it can it can not just store thirty two thousand six hundred and fifty four number, but it can store thirty two thousand six hundred and fifty four numbers like this. This 
all zero 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 zero. So it's a very long number already. But when you use a long int, it is even longer. It is twice than this. So you can imagine even your calculator. You try typing out the numbers continuously, and you will realize your Casio calculators are typically limited by seventy-five characters. So if you type one, two, three, four. you will realize that after 75 characters it will stop typing and uh, yeah obviously you cannot type 75 because that will be around 150 character but then uh, you can do plus and again you type 75 character your calculator will throw an error because the addition will be more than its total capacity and the uh, addition will be 76 characters and that's why it cannot perform two uh, operations on 75 length characters similarly your int is band limited by the memory so why you need a long int because you need 8 bytes 8 bytes mean total 8 into 8 64 bits so that long information you can store in a particular int format and you can do the operation whereas long double can go up to very much of 16 bytes of memory so you can imagine you are just storing a one variable f with long double that is taking 16 bytes of your memory and then you make 100 copies of it and then it becomes 1600 bytes which is 1.6 kb so if the program size of operator finds the size of int long long double and long long double so as you can see the size of long int and long double variables are larger than regular int and double variable respectively by the way size of operation returns size t uh, using a integral type so size t is a data type used to represent the size of an object the format specifier used uh, for size t is percentage %u uh, the long keyword cannot be used with float and caret so you don't have anything called as long float or uh, because it's double so that's why there is not long float and long character is not there character is always one byte irrespective of whether it is a short character or only character there is nothing called as long character because we know all the characters we have is 26 let's say capital and small becomes 52 and then we have nine numbers so that's all we have with this particular thing now next uh, understand how we will do a swapping program so this is the task now i will tell you we have to write a program to take the first number from the user which will be stored into the variable first then take the second number from the user which will be stored into the variable second now you have to use a temp variable you have to load your first number into the temp variable then uh, assign the second number to the first one and then reassign the second variable with the original first number temp so using this operation what has happened what a number you entered is now stored uh, first number is stored into the second and second number is now stored into the first so after displaying you will say after swapping the first number is then some number and then after swapping the second number is then some number so i will stop recording now and now you have to write this program for temporarily swapping the two numbers if you have any doubts you can ask me